Good afternoon, everyone. I will call this regularly scheduled meeting of the Ways and Means Committee to order. I'm the chair of the committee. My name is Abdi Wasami, and with me today are council members Johnson, uh, Fletcher, and Palmasano, uh, and we are a quorum of the committee and can therefore conduct our business today. Today on the consent agenda, we have 30 items for consideration along with one walk-in item, and the consent items are as follows. Uh, we have item number one is a legal settlement, uh, Lauren Underwood versus City of Minneapolis. Um, item number two is a legal settlement of Maya Mora Jen Jennings versus City of Minneapolis. Item number three is a contract amendment with CoStar Realty Information Inc. for access to real estate information database. Item number four is a contract amendment with Minneapolis Downtown Council for downtown activation services. Item number five is a bid for the Minneapolis Convention Center Command Center relocation project. Item number six is a bid for Minneapolis Convention Center uh, Plaza renovation project. Item number seven is a bid for the public service building project, carpentry, uh, casework, and miscellaneous. Item number eight is a bid for the public service buildings project, tile and stone. Item number nine is a bid for the public service building project, masonry. Item number 10 is a bid for the public service building project, drywall and fireproofing. Item number 11 is a contract amendment with cost Planning and Management International Inc. for Owners Project Representative Services for the Public Service Building Project. Item number 12 is a grant from the Minnesota Department of Health for, staffing, for staff training. Item number 13 is an application for environmental grant funding in the spring 2019 Brownfield Grant Round. Item number 14 is a contract amendment with eligible providers for employment and trading services. Item number 15 is a contract with Selco uh, Partnerships, uh, a Verizon wireless for safety cameras. And item number 16 is a contract with uh, Vertiba to implement SAS solutions for financial portfolio management. Item number 17 is a contract amendment with Iritia. Uh, consulting Group LL LTD for additional development services. Item number 18 is a contract amendment with Swift Reach Networks Inc. to provide a hosted solution for rapid notification systems. Item number 19 is a contract amendment with Granicus LLC for subscription based document hosting services. Item number 20 is Lake Street Housing Phase 1 tax increment financing plan for 410 West Lake Street. Item number 21 is a grant application to the Metropolitan Council Livable Communities Demonstration Account uh, Pre-Development Program for the Upper Harbor Terminal Site Project. Item number 22 is a Penhurst Residential Street Resurfacing Project Approval and Assessment. Item number 23 is a 2019 Concrete Streets Rehabilitation Program Wake Park Neighborhood Project Approval and Assessment. Item number 24 is an agreement with Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board for multi-use trail construction and maintenance on Industrial Boulevard from I-35W to Broadway Street Northeast. Item number 25 is a gift acceptance from Green Minneapolis for revitalization of PV Plaza. Item number 26 is an agreement with Burlington Northern Northern Santa Fe Railway for water main crossing. Um, item number 27 is a contract amendment with Valley Paving Inc. for 42nd Avenue North uh, Street Re Reconstruction Project. Item number 28 is a contract amendment with Global Specialty Contractors Inc. for PV Plaza Construction Project. Item number 29 is a contract amendment with PCI Roads for Fridley Lift Station Improvements Project. Item number 30 is a temporary construction easement and permanent water main easement agreement with Minneapolis Park and Recreation Board. And the water on the walk-in item is uh, a gift acceptance from cities today for lodging and food related expenses for the 2020 cities urban mobility meeting. And I move approval of all the, uh, the consent agenda and the walk-in item. Um, any discussions from my colleagues, any of those items? And, and I've been joined, we've been joined by Council Vice President Jenkins, and go ahead. Thank you, Chair Rasami. Um, I just wanted to speak to item number 14, the contract amendments with eligible providers for employment and training services, 
And it just seems like this is an opportunity for us as a city to talk to employment and training providers about how do we ensure that we are preparing um, communities of color, women for um, low-income communities for positions that are um, needed in the city uh, help, to help us shore up um, places where we are coming up short in meeting some of our equity goals in, in the city. And so I just wanted to highlight this as an opportunity for us to talk with those employment and training agencies um, about um, improving the pipeline for uh, positions within the, the city of Minneapolis. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, and I'm not sure if there's anybody here from uh, CPAD to speak to that at all, but nope. Um, but okay. I just wanted to note that as, a, as an opportunity. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you for the comment. Any other questions? I would like to make an update on the consent items. Uh, I would like to pull item number 10 from our agenda. And there needs to be some work on that item. And uh, so we're going to pull that item. So again, I move approval of all items, all 30 items except for item number 10 um, and the walk-in item as well. So any further discussion on that? Okay, seeing none. All those in approval say aye. 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 Those against, and those items have been approved. So thank you very much. Now I'll move, uh, I'll move, we'll move to our discussion items, and we have two discussion items on our agenda. Um, and, um, we'll start with item number 31, which is a request for proposal for banking services authorizing issuance of a request for proposal RFP for banking services for three years with the option of a Two one-year extension, and um, I have some uh, some of our staff here. We have Mr. Larry Parker, as well as uh, Mr. Mark Ruff uh, at the back for reserve. So go ahead, Mr. Parker. Um, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, I am Larry Parker, and I am the cash manager in the Finance and Property Services Department. And as the cash manager, one of my responsibilities is to oversee uh, the daily banking operations for the city. About every five years, the city issues an RFP for banking services, and I'm here today to ask for your approval to issue that RFP. <clears throat> there are going to be about five uh, banking services that are, are uh, in the RFP. The first banking service is for depository services. Um, this includes the establishment of bank accounts for depositing of city revenues and distributing uh, city expenditures. You can think of it as the city's checking account. Uh, the cash balance is kept in this account as low and it's just enough to cover our, our expenditures. The second banking services is for lockbox. This is a, essentially a PO box where city payments are sent to be processed by the bank and deposited directly into the city bank account the same day and a payment file is then returned to the city to be downloaded into the appropriate business application. Lockbox payments are processed from several different departments in the city. Utilities, permits, licenses, annual fees, and city receivables are some of those. The third banking services is prepaid card. It's also referred to as a pay card or a stored value card. Uh, this service provides city employees, summer youth, election judges, and independent contractors with an alternative payment method um, option uh, to the usual check or direct deposit. The fourth banking service is merchant card services, which enables our various departments and locations to accept credit cards. And the final banking service is custodial services. This is for the safekeeping and administration of our investment securities. The proposers for these services may include banks, non-banks, and other financial institutions. So it's not necessarily just banks. Our last RFP issued in 2014 bundle all the services except merchant services into a unified RFP. Merchant services was a separate RFP altogether. 
What that meant was that a proposer needed to respond to all the services as required services. And as a result, only a few large banks responded. In order to increase the diversity of our proposers and provide a wide variety of responses, our 2019 RFP has been unbundled. Proposals will be able to respond to the banking services that best fit their capacity as a financial institution. Although there will surely be large banks that will respond to all the services, smaller banks and non-banks will have the opportunity to choose which services they, they desire to um, or are comfortable proposing for. During the evaluation pro uh, process, we are establishing subcommittees for each of these services that will review the proposals for each one and members of these subcommittees will come from the departments throughout the city who are affected by these various services. Final recommendations will made, be made to the council by an evaluation committee comprised of the CFO, the deputy CFO, the controller's office, coordinator's office, mayor's staff, and ways and means chair staff and vice chair staff. So it's very, uh, very diverse. The evaluation process will center around four major criteria including responsible banking, the scope of services, the cost of services, and the financial capacity of the proposers. What is our timeline for this RFP? The RFP is expected to be published in early May. We expect to get the proposals back later in June. During the month of July, we'll be going through the evaluation process. Um, and hope to have uh, recommendations to the council in August or early September. In the fall, the contracts, which can take some time, um, will be negotiated and executed, and implementation will begin with new banking relationships in place by next March. This concludes my presentation. Are there any questions? Uh, thank you, Mr. Park. Um, and we have a question or query from Council Member Fletcher. Thank you, Chair Warsami, and thank you for this presentation. I really appreciate it, and I know this is uh, something that uh, is the result of previous council discussions, and so it's great to see this actually coming to fruition, and I wanted to make sure to lift up uh, that we have unbundled these things, so hopefully we do have uh, a, a broader array of banks that have the ability to participate in some of the city's business, and uh, I think we benefit from that diversity uh, of uh, uh, at least potential vendors. Uh, and I also think that uh, there's a real value in just uh, reaffirming that responsible banking is a part of the uh, rubric that we're going to be using, that, uh, that it matters uh, how banks are behaving in our community and, and uh, uh, that uh, a bank that's engaging in a lot of really predatory and harmful activity over here is not going to look as good in, in an application to the city. Um, even if they, you know, offer us a great rate. And so I, I think it's important for everybody to understand that we're weighing uh, those values and, and that we're trying to create opportunities uh, for banks um, to participate who, um, who aren't like the big five in the country who could do uh, the, the full scope of a big city's uh, business. So really appreciate the work. I know it's uh, not the easiest path. Uh, I know it is extra work uh, for your department uh, to break these things up and manage the administration of that. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Councilman Fletcher. Do you have a question? No. All right. Thank you. Um, thank you, Mr. Parker. Um, I see no further discussion. Uh, appreciate all the hard work that our staff has done on this. Uh, project and I'll move approval of this item. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those against? That item has uh, been approved. So we move on to our last item today, which is uh, item number 32, which is a 2000, which is a 2018 fourth quarter financial report. And um, I think Mr. Lyle Hodges is going to give that presentation. Go ahead, Ms. Hodges. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the committee, uh, as introduced, I'm Lyle Hodges, the controller for the city, uh, here to present the financial status report as of the fourth quarter of 2018. Um, did just want to take a second to recognize the staff and the controller's division for preparing the report um, that I'm going to present. It's a, it's a busy time of year for us all, so I appreciate their efforts. 
Just a brief overview, the financial picture of the city as a whole continues to remain healthy and stable. Um, we've got an overall cash and investments position at December 31, 2018 of 879.6 million. This is just a slight increase of 2.3 million from where we were at the end of 2017. And we will continue to meet our fund balance and net position reserve requirements in our major funds uh, once again in 2018. Diving in uh, specifically on the general fund, uh, the fund balance finished the year at 104.2 million. This was a 12.9 million decrease compared to where we were at the end of 2017. However, that decrease was less than we had budgeted, um, which was 17.3 million. The general fund has a minimum fund balance requirement of 17% of the next year's budget. So that equates to 81.1 million for year end 2018. Uh, as you can see there, we're exceeding that and we're actually at 22% of the 2019 budget. Um, with that healthy financial position, we are able to roll over approximately seven and a half million or so in um, appropriation that was unspent at the end of the year. So you'll see that in a future uh, committee agenda. In the general fund specifically, the cash balance ended the year at 121.3 million. This was a $10.5 million decrease, again, reflective of the fact that we um, you know, spent more than we brought in. Uh, going a little bit deeper into specifically the revenue side in the general fund, this slide shows uh, some historical references as it relates to major revenue categories. A lot of numbers on the slide <laughs> um, and the graph, but basically the takeaway is that over time, our categories of revenue remain consistent um, and we're bringing in, uh, you know, the amounts that we bring in vary from year to year, but the actual makeup is pretty consistent. Um, obviously the big exception for 2018 is the fact that we no longer deposit our local tax revenue in the general fund that's going to the new downtown assets fund group um, so that's kind of a significant change there and then uh, how does revenue compare to budget yeah uh, you can see here typically in the past three years we've collected uh, about 103 percent of the budget so we over collect on revenue this year we're actually a little bit higher at 103.6%. So again, a healthy and stable collection of revenue in the general fund for 2018. And then on the other side, we've got the expenditures. Uh, here again, the historical reference points to the fact that we've got uh, a consistent makeup of expenditures in the general fund. And that continues through 2018. Um, again, the impact of the local taxes on the expenditure side is that we no longer transfer as much out to the special revenue funds because the money is going there in, in the first place. So, And then the final slide on the general fund operations um, relates again to expenditures as, as a percent of budget. And here again, we can see that historically we, we spend about 97% of our budget in 2018. We spent about 98%. Um, so again, that allowed us to keep our fund balance uh, above target and maintain a, a healthy and stable financial position. Um, the next few slides kind of group all the remaining funds into categories. So the first category of funds is the special revenue funds. Um, we don't look at all of them, but I have listed some of the significant ones that we're looking at here. This is the convention center, target center, MPD, NCR, and reg services the grant funds and CPED. So at the end of 2018, they had a combined fund balance of 332 million. This represented a $6.5 million increase compared to where we were at the end of 2017. Um, those funds again had a cash balance of 314 million, which was a $25.6 million increase. Uh, and just a note there, we did transfer about $10 million out of the general fund into the CPED special revenue funds to more appropriately account for their long-term projects. Um, general fund operations are more like one-year annual appropriations and the CPED projects were more long-term. So we thought it was a, a more appropriate place to account for those. 
Uh, the next slide is internal service funds. These are funds that provide services to other funds within the city. So we've got six of them in the city and they're listed out there um, in detail. Uh, at the end of the year, 2018, we have $195.2 million net position. Uh, here again, another increase, 14.6 million over where we were at the end of 2017. And our cash position is also an increase. We're at 165.2 million in our internal service funds. Uh, this reflects work done to stabilize these funds. Um, as long as efforts to upgrade, develop, and maintain our uh, technology assets, especially obviously in the IT fund. And the final slide here is just uh, an overview of the enterprise funds. So these are the funds that we use to account for business type activities of the city where we sell goods and services to outside parties. These are the utility operations funds, sanitary sewer, stormwater, water, solid waste and recycling, parking, and then some CPED activity. Here we've got a total net position at the end of the year of 996 million. So that was a $10.1 million increase from the end of 2017. And the cash in the enterprise funds at the end of 2018 was 123.8 million, which was actually a slight decrease from where we were in 2017. Uh, the decrease was due to the fact that the operations of the fund or the, the capital operations in these funds are financed through either cash or debt. And so depending on the mix of that financing, it, it can change from year to year. So that's all I had. Questions? Okay. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Hodges, uh, for your presentation. Uh, any questions or queries? All right, so um, seeing none, um, I move to receive and file this quarterly update. All those in approval say aye. Aye. Those against, and since seeing no further items on our agenda, uh, we are adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.